Sam's here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, bringing you a film breakdown of Florida's offense versus Alabama's defense. I'm going to bring you even more content on this particular game due to the nature of it. So hopefully you enjoy the extended look at even more plays. As always, if you like this content, subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, consider giving us a dono on Patreon to support our efforts to bring you this type of content. And last but certainly not least, check out our podcast each and every Monday where we give you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. And with that, let's dive into the plays. So right out of the gate, Dan Mullen had a game plan to feature his tight ends. First down, featured a tight end. On second down, you're going to have Kamori Gamble down here. And Alabama is predictably playing the defense we thought we would see them play, which we showed on the Bama defensive film review. Florida going to have trips to the right. They're going to have three defenders here. And then, of course, the conflict defender as a linebacker here playing run and pass if he wants. This safety can come support or drop back. He can come here. Either way, Florida was successful all day long with their tight ends. And here is a tightly covered pass. Again, we're focusing here. This is a little whip out right there. Nice ball from Emery, on-time delivery. Take a look, on-time delivery. Reese gets beat, on-time delivery. Good ball from Emery early in this game. That converts for a first down. This was, of course, the best game that Emery has played as a Gator. We're going to see just how good it was and if it's going to be repeatable going forward. Although Florida struggled early in this game to score points and were downright awful at times, there were a lot of signs that Florida's offense could be good in this game. You're going to see this as we walk through the game. But with this first down and 10 play, Alabama is telling you right away that they have no respect for Florida's passing game whatsoever. You're going to have Copeland down here running absolutely uncovered and completely wide open off of your screen. All of Bama's defenders are going to be focusing on the run game with the exception of, of course, the corners locked up here. And even here, take a look at where his eyes are on this snap. Uh, everyone is a run defender on the bottom of your screen. You can see Copeland just goes right by. This, of course, is a handoff, but you can imagine an RPO situation where Emery pulls this ball back down and throws, obviously, a very easy go route here over the top. The good news for Florida was, despite the fact that Bama was prepared to stop the run, and that was, in fact, their game plan, Florida got a huge game from their offensive line, and one of the best offensive linemen of the day was Ethan White, number 77. You'll see him here pulling across the formation, as you're going to see a lot on this film review, getting an absolutely great block right here, which is going to spring Florida and Malik Davis for a nice gain right there uh, on first down. If there was one play that really changed the entire direction of this football game, it was a play we have featured two weeks in a row now on this film review. We actually talked about it at length on the USF breakdown, and that is the speed option. I talked about how much I loved that play in NCAA football. It turns out that play was amazing for Florida against Alabama, and we'll show you the reason why. On the film for Bama's defense, as we bring Whittemore across the formation here, we showed you a couple things. One, Bama's always going to start too high, and if you bring a motion receiver over, they're going to rotate their safety down. We know that about how Nick Saban likes to play defense. Secondarily, they often like to crash this really hard, and oftentimes they will bring another linebacker over to fill. Perhaps they'll even bring him here to fill. They'll do a lot of different things to play aggressively on a zone read look, and Florida took advantage of that by running the speed option. Take a look here. If you're running a traditional zone read, you're either going to hand this ball off to your running back or you're going to come out here. Alabama's ready for this action, so they're going to set their edge defender here, and he's waiting to make sure he's accounting for Emery, trusting his defense to win on the inside handoff. But an easy way to blow this up is to set twins out here. Bama's going to bail off the line. You have one defender here. And then by simply attacking this way instead, you flip the script and you now are two on one this edge defender, which is exactly what Florida does. There it is. Nice pitch. Emery's very good at this. He times his pitch quite well for a, a non-triple option running quarterback. And as we've highlighted all season long, the downfield blocking of Florida's wide receivers has been particularly excellent, especially Whittemore and Shorter as we're going to see in this video, but Copeland's done well too. And there you're going to get a nice block from Whittemore. There's shorter as well. I mean, sorry, there's some Copeland on the edge. And that's going to spring 
a great game here from Malik Davis. Of course, all of Florida's running backs really had a nice day today. But that all starts with excellent play calling by Dan Mullen. I think as you look at this game on tape, you're possibly going to come to the same conclusion I did, that this is Dan Mullen's best day of play calling as a Florida Gators coach. And he has been fantastic on many other days. But given what Emory can and can't do, and given what he was able to do against Nick Saban's Alabama team, this was truly remarkable stuff by Dan Mullen. An excellent, excellent game plan. He was able to use Nick Saban's defensive sound rules to actually create plays that would work. Uh, Really, really good stuff. And that's an example of one right there. And the speed option uh, was mentioned by Nick Saban after the game. It's something that really took them out of what they wanted to do. Emory started slow in this game. Emory still obviously has serious deficiencies as a quarterback, but really a fantastic job by him to take what he has and make the most of it in a high pressure game that they got, you know, Florida was significantly down in essentially. And so I'm going to make sure that you know that he deserves plenty of credit in this breakdown. And of course, my job on film is to show you the things that any player did well and also the things that they could improve on. So one thing that Emory still struggles with is really reading the field. In fact, most of these plays you're going to see today are first read throws from Emory. When there's an opportunity to have more, it's not quite going to be there. Now on this one, he's actually going to throw to his second read. He wants to throw a go route here to Copeland. That's where his eyes are going to go. Again, he's too quick with the eyes right here. Shifty eyes, as I've been saying. These should be stickier. He's too quick here. He needs to try to really engage this safety, even though they're in too high This is going to have to be an earlier throw, but you want to hold this just a little bit longer before you come to this go route. Then check your go route. Now, right now, he's on the go route. He doesn't like the go route. He's just going to come here, despite the fact that he's got a great pocket and he has Whittemore wide open. He's going to elect to throw here. Now, why would he attempt to make this tight throw to Malik Davis? It's basically in his vision window. This is where he's looking. He doesn't like what he sees there. This is a player he sees. The game, is, I, the game, I believe, moves pretty quick for Emery in the read department. So things are not going slowly processing-wise. He's going to put this ball out there, and it winds up being an incompletion. Of course, this is a nice scheme by Dan Mullen. He totally blows up Alabama's zone. They blow their assignment. This ball goes to Whittemore. He has nothing but space up here for an, a big, big gain on the first drive. Instead, it goes for an incompletion. So, of course, Emory will see this on film. The coaches will show this to him as well. He'll continue to work on trying to become more comfortable uh, making these reads, but he misses one here. Florida had amazing success with chipping and releasing their tight ends. Here is Gamble, and you're going to see him engage this block just for a second. Again, zone read action. That's going to hold everyone up. Take a look at all of Bama's linebackers, even their nickels. They're all coming up. They're expecting runs. The first drive of the game. They do not respect Florida's passing game. You can see behind it, they're only playing three defenders and a safety. They're selling out to stop the run. So Florida says, we know you're going to do that. Let's chip in here with Gamble and then release. Again, everyone's eyes in the backfield here. Everyone's eyes in the backfield. There it is. And then Emery is able to set the feet here and get this ball out. It's a nice delivery under under pressure. He knows it's going to be under pressure. This play is designed for him to be able to get in there. Timing's got to be just right, and it is. Great execution by Florida here. And then Gamble takes this for a really nice game. Now, all day long, Florida had really good protection. Only a few times are we going to see Florida not protect well. Take a look at this. We're not used to, or I should say, I'm not used to seeing Florida against Alabama be able to hold their own on the front line. And the story of the film is that Florida not only held their own, they actually dominated this game at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, especially on Florida's left side, as we're going to see on this film. But regardless, really nice play again from Dan Mullen, knowing how Bama's going to defend. And not only, of course, on this play, do you have a wide open gamble, you also have Copeland, who's running wide open here on this middle crosser. Florida receivers were open for most of the day. Uh, Again, Dan Mullen really just absolutely showing his mastery of coordinating a college football offense. Last year from Kyle Trask, vertical routes, um, you know, a whole different playbook to this year, just really a simplified version, uh, heavy run oriented, but also very creative. 
very creative. These plays aren't just working because they're basic. A lot of nice pre-snap motions and movements that are going to throw the defense off the trail of what's happening, and that makes it easy for Emery to be able to do his job. Florida's already done this once. I'm going to show it to you the second time. Alabama was jumping off sides. They were also false starting, as we're going to see on the defensive breakdown, uh, on the offensive breakdown for Bama, defensive breakdown for Florida. But Florida did a nice job of this. As soon as Bama crossed the neutral zone, they were going to pop up. And I haven't always seen Florida's offensive line be so aggressive with doing this. I think they knew that every yard mattered in this game. Of course, it matters in every game, but it really mattered in this one. Steps across in the neutral zone, a quick pop-up. Again, this has already happened once. Guraj got them earlier, and that's going to lead to a first down. So a nice job by Florida's offensive line there. Nick Saban, of course, not thrilled with that. We spent a lot of time last year looking at film review and how Florida was unable to win in the running game, even when they were plus numbers. Teams would load up their defensive backfields to stop Kyle Trask's passing attack, and they would be seven on six, sometimes seven on five, and they couldn't run the ball well. In this case, we have even numbers. Florida's going to have two, four, six, and then seven versus Bama's seven. Bama's electing to play with no safety here. Again, they're expecting Florida to run. It's the first drive of the game. They don't think Emory can pass. And what Florida was able to do here, again, was a was a signal for the rest of the game. Take a look at Emory Jones. Not touched until he's four yards down the field. DeLance is going to fall down here. This little kind of... He's trying to he's trying to obviously go low and get a cut block. But that doesn't work perfectly, but it works effectively. On the left side of the line, you can see already... Take a look at our left tackle here. Again, Guraj had a sensational game. He's going to get a block, help block here with Ethan White. Go to the next level and lock up there. Take a look at this. I mean, look at what we have here. Look at this. This is absolute domination against an Alabama team that is not used to getting dominated. Look at the push, clearing out. Again, they are expecting run there. It's seven on seven. It's hat on half football. And Florida has a significant gain on first down. So right from the beginning, it was evident that Florida was winning at the line of scrimmage. It's now third and six. One of the ways you can tell how coaches feel about their quarterbacks is what kind of routes their receivers are running. Florida's going to get a decoy route here, really just a nothing a nothing route to keep this player down. They're actually trying to hit this wheel route from Naquan. Then they're going to get two clear out routes here and then an underneath from Shorter, which is where the ball's actually going to go from Emory. This is covered well by Emma, uh, Bama across the board. We'll f- start at the top of your screen here and take a look here. Emory's going to go there right away. That's covered. That's good defense. Nowhere to go there. He's then going to come down to Shorter, which is what he's looking at now. He actually throws a nice... This is a nice ball here. There's not a window. Shorter does have embodied. There's not a whole lot that can be done uh, there. You'd like to see this ball be a little bit lower. Uh, of course, if we're looking for perfection, bring this ball down here a little bit lower, a little bit more in front. This is good coverage, though, by Bama and ultimately an incompletion for Florida. Uh, but a simple route package for Emory. Again, most importantly, something we would saw go on throughout the game. Let's look at the front four here. Bama's going to bring four and look at the pocket that Emory Jones has. Look at this. Again, we saw all last year what Kyle Trask faced. Relentless pressure. Even DeLance here holding up. In fact, DeLance had a pretty good game, especially by DeLance's standards in this game. But that's excellent work by the offensive line, giving Emory Jones all kinds of time. Uh, Obviously, as the season goes on, if Emory continues to be Dan's favorite guy, uh, I would certainly hope that there's going to be better and more complicated route combinations. That's going to be entirely dependent upon Emory Jones, which again, so far, there hasn't been a lot of indication that he's able to read the field to where you could put in a lot of those combinations. So keeping it simple where he will not turn the ball over is what you're more likely to see if Florida maintains this number one rushing attack they have. I think you'll continue to see that, especially against Florida's weaker opponents on the schedule. We highlighted Will Anderson on our Bama breakdown. He was an absolute menace all day long. If you're watching this game, either in the swamp or on television, you watched our breakdown, you already knew this. Uh, He was wreaking havoc. Take a look at the play he's going to make here. Come in, hold the edge on the zone read. Here's a block. He's going to hold the edge like he should. Gets off the block and then makes the tackle. Again, you're going to see him just wherever 31 is, pay attention to what's happening. He's a very, very smart football player. Not only is he skilled, very smart. Doesn't go for the fake. Does his job. Kicks outside. Makes the tackle. 
Nice play by Will Anderson. Of course, Florida was not always successful with their zone reads. This is an example where Emory should have handed the football off, which is why I'm actually showing it to you. It's right here on the zone read. Emory is a very, very good zone read quarterback. He is stopping and setting the edge. This ball's got to go to Naquan. That's the place it's got to go. Again, this is probably not going to go for much, but that's where it's got to go. If it does get handed off, you know this linebacker is going to have to make a tackle here. Uh, but regardless, Emery and the read you have on this zone read, right? Pretty basic. You're going to read this edge defender. If he comes in hard here and crashes down, Emery keeps it. If not, this has got to get handed off. This ball should have been handed off. It wasn't. And Will Anderson Jr. makes a nice play. This is the Emory Jones interception. Now, early on in this game, Alabama is going to wind up playing some man. They'll play some man defense here. They switched to much more zone. Uh, on third down, uh, you're going to see this as the game goes on, which they're generally less comfortable with, largely because Florida was gouging them so significantly in the run game. It's harder to stop the run game in man than it is in zone. So again, they really had to come out of their base defenses. But at this stage of the game, they're still in their normal defense, and they are going to get pressure here right up the middle with this stunt. This is a nice, really not a stunt. It's really just an inside rush lane and Guraj is going to pass this off and then take the outside lane but there is no one to pass this off to so i think that's a that's a mental error there from Guraj. you rarely see that in that situation uh, he really needs to lock up there and you can see again bam a nice stunt here across the formation they're stunting around the edge bringing him inside but nothing ford hasn't handled before so this one gets through emery's under pressure Again, under pressure, he can't drive through on this throw. And this ball just gets thrown over this route of Henderson's. What Florida was trying to do, what Florida was trying to do on this play, and you're going to see it. Well, you're not going to see it there. You're going to see him get hit. There you go. Florida here on the all 22, as we can see, they're actually, again, this is really just a one, really a one option route. It's going to be a deep comeback. Take a look here. There it is. And he's coming back and he is open. Take a look. He turns open to the inside here very nicely. If this is protected and Emery delivers a good ball, that's going to be a completion for a first down. And it's another simple route for Emery. He's going here the whole way. We know this because he really just looks at the safety. Take a look at his eyes. He's going to look at the safety. And then he's going to come right down to his first read. Again, he's early on all of these. This, in my opinion, is too early. Take a look at how long it takes before he gets rid of this ball. And he has pressure. I can guarantee you he wouldn't have gotten rid of it right then either, except he feels the pressure. It's a little early. It's earlier than he even wants. Uh, regardless, the pressure does cause that interception. I think if you're Dan Mullen, you're not as frustrated about this Emory pick as you've been about other ones because there is somebody right in his face. He is throwing to the right guy. Uh, unfortunately, he throws it way off the mark because of the pressure, and that winds up being a pick for Alabama. Florida going to go back to the speed option well right here. And this is going to be nice work by DeLance. So if you want the speed option to work, again, here's your edge defender in this situation, right? Three down linemen. They're really in the tight. This is the tight front we talked about. Take a look here. This is your tight front. Playing the run, making sure they're going to stop the interior run in the zone read. And these are going to be your edge defenders on both sides. So they're set up to stop Florida running the ball in second and five. Alabama expects a run. And Dan Mullen says, you can expect a run, but do you expect this play design? And this is where the creativity comes in. Florida is going to engage their defensive end in the tight front. Again, something we mentioned, how would Dan attack this? Well, this is a great way to attack. Let's use a guard to take out the defensive end. Let's then have DeLance cut off the linebacker who needs to get over here to stop this play. Here we go. We're going to fake this just to hold for a second. Hey, look, we're going to fake like we're going to run the zone read just so that you hold to make sure we can get to Lance out here. And then we can two on one the unblocked defender. Florida does this perfectly. Take a look at this. Blocked up, blocked up. DeLance is going to get all the way out here. Block. Look at this blocking by the receiver on the edge. And then Emery does the right thing here. He sees that he is doing his job, which is true. This is his job. His job is the running back. His job is Emery, except he's blocked. Emery's going to keep this, take off, and then take a look at this. Again, Copeland, great blocking here from Copeland. DeLance is still blocking way, way down the field to the point to where he is never even in the play to make a tackle. 
Great job by DeLance, a guy who obviously on film has had a lot of negative plays associated with him. There's a great one by DeLance in this game, and a great play again by Dan Mulling, knowing he's going to see the tight front, showing he knows how to attack that, even if Alabama's expecting a run. Nice work by Emory to execute. Florida did a nice job running in between in between the tackles, and one reason was uh, they were able to use deception to get Alabama to commit to the edge. So we're going to bring Whittemore here, release him on the edge. That's going to bring the safety down. It's going to hold their edge defender. Take a look at the action you see here. There's Whittemore like he's going to block, like Emery is going to take the ball out there. We're going to bring the safety down to rotate to the motion. Smart play by Dan Mullen. That's going to give us just enough time for Malik to sneak through here. See this play here? There you go. And although he makes the tackle on first down, that is a seven-yard gain. You'll take that every single time. So again, nice designs by Dan Mullen here to open up these gaps just enough. And then Florida's O-line executing, again, very well. Take a look at the offensive line. Look at where we're at here. Kingsley, phenomenal game. Driving down the field, pushing blocks, pushing linebackers, getting to the second level. Really, really good stuff. So even though it's 21 to 3 Alabama, if you're just looking at this from an offensive coordinator perspective, you feel pretty good. Your offensive line's winning the battle, especially the left side here of uh, Guraj, White, and Kingsley. You expect good things to happen. You feel like, hey, I'm getting what I want. I have opportunities. Am I able to hit some plays when I need to? And here's an example of one. Florida's going to take a shot here with a go route up the sideline. We'll talk about what happens once I show it to you. There it is. It's way off the mark. Way off the mark, right? Florida does a nice job first in pass protection on the right side. Here is DeLance. Again, he's struggled with this in the past. Nice pickup. Great pickup here by Malik. Excellent pickup on the free blitzer. He really eats him up despite getting driven into Emery. Emery, however... As something we continue to see on film does not drive into his throws. Take a look. First of all, you know they're going to be in single high. Here's your single high safety. He's going to make no effort to even look at the safety. Now look, if you're in the NFL, this safety is going here. And he's going to, he's going to be able to help on any kind of bad throw you make. Of course, Emery knows the safety can't get there. But I'd like to see him first put his eyes here. Then come to this route. Secondarily... As his back foot hits the ground, he knows this is going to be a quick throw. He's waiting for his right moment. And once again, take a look. He's leaning back. And look at how he finishes. He frequently finishes backwards. You want to see him drive this right foot down into this throw, forward towards the throw. You shouldn't be seeing his helmet consistently leaning back in that direction. He does this frequently, and that's what's pulling these throws off target. That ball's nowhere nowhere near where it needs to be. And there's a simple fix to this, of course, which is to drive through your throw, uh, not fade away, and not finish. you got to finish that throw. That's off the mark. Uh, nice drive down the field by Florida, though this is going to pay dividends later, mainly via penalty. Uh, but the fact that Florida was willing to do it was showing Alabama they would challenge them at all levels of the field. They were successful just enough, again, primarily through penalties, to keep Alabama honest in that regard. Third and four, this is one of the nicer plays I've seen Emery put on film. He's going to check up here at the top to see what his matchup looks like there. Again, does he give that a long enough time to see if it's there? I don't know, but he's looking there really quickly. Uh, I think all along he knows he wants to come to Whittemore. If you ask me, I think this is just looking to look. But what he does here is actually very, very nice. There's going to be a little, just watch close. I'm going to slow-mo this for you. Little pump fake, and then the completion. Now, why does this matter? This is one of the things in the game live you may or may not notice, especially if you're in the stadium. But let's watch one more time, see if you can pick it up. Little pump fake, and then look at this. Let's now focus right here. Little pump fake. Bingo. He actually clears himself a throwing window. He is spying Emery's eyes. If Emery just stares down Whittemore and throws this ball on a line, there's a good chance this ball gets batted down. He gives a little pump fake here. Just a little bit. Just open up just a bit. That's going to get him going this direction. Clears a throwing lane. And then converts a nice 
first down for Florida on third and four. Emery actually had some really good third down throws. In fact, in the high leverage situations, he tended to be at his best in this game. That was one reason why Florida was able to score 29 points. Dan Mullen going to call a shovel pass on this play. This is a nice play call that doesn't work because, again, Will Anderson is an absolute beast, but a great play call. So Florida now knows, having run the spread option, that Alabama is going to be ready for it and prepared to try to stop it. So they're going to bring their linebacker immediately into play, the running back, and they're going to have Will Anderson stay on the quarterback. So one way Florida can run the football up the middle is to have a little shovel pass right here. And in fact, this would have been a great play. Take a look. You have Ethan White coming across the formation. There's actually no one to block. In fact, this is such a great channel. If we could have just gotten Will Anderson one or two more yards over here, this play is going to be a big play. As it stands, he waits and blows it up. Again, if Emery could have either taken a yard or two more out here, if he could have brought him out here just a bit more, this play could have went for, for many, many yards. Unfortunately, it does not. But a nice play call by Dan Mullen, again, showing he knows if Bama's going to take this step, then I will take this step. And he's doing it proactively, and he's picking good times to do it. Again, unfortunately, great players can sometimes take away even the best laid plans. It's third and seven. We saw this formation from Miami, which we actually showed several times on the Bama versus Miami kind of primer um, in preparation of this game. Unlike Miami, where Alabama actually frequently covered 3v4 over here, they do give Emory Jones some more respect and they play 4v4, single high safety. And this is all window dressing because all Dan Mullen really wants is what he gets right here, which is five and five. This makes six plus one in the running game. That's what he wants. Plus one in the running game. Florida is going to take advantage on third and seven. And did they get the first down? No, but something Dan Mullen knew coming into the game was, I don't have a quarterback that's really gifted with throwing the football, uh, making reads, and throwing accurately. So what can I do in these third and sevens if I can steal four or five yards and make it something manageable? And this is a lean to the old school Dan Mullen, sort of looking for those three and a half, four yards per play and get myself to a down and distance I can handle, especially since my O-line is winning. That's going to be a win for me. And that's what he does there. That's nice management of the game by Dan Mullen. I think it's good understanding if you're going to play Emory Jones. And of course, this film breakdown is not going to talk about whether or not Florida should have played Anthony Richardson. Was he healthy? We talk about that at length every single week on the podcast. You want to hear those thoughts and what that looks like. Uh, we certainly discuss those things. But since Emory was going to be the guy the entire time, this is the right game plan for a quarterback like Emory. Here's a crucial fourth and three. Florida still down 21 to three. At this point in time, it felt pretty bad in the swamp. If you were at the game, probably felt pretty bad on television too. This is a nice play by Alabama. It also shows how Florida is, is keeping things simple for Emory. You're going to have Copeland here on a very easy drag route across the middle. This is where the ball should go. I'm not going to fault Emory here because the ball's never going there. This is sort of just a little decoy route. But again, if this is what you see, this kind of cushion on fourth and three, and you see this kind of alignment here, if you trust your quarterback or if Emory gets to the point where he can make these reads and throws, this is going to be a smoke or a hot route, either way you want to call it. And that's going to be run half the distance and quick. And this ball is going to be thrown here. Now, of course, Bama could drop guys into this window and do a bunch of other things, but... That's primarily where you would be looking. We also mentioned that Bama loves to blitz their nickel to put pressure, which they're going to do here. Uh, Dan Mullen is counting on that. He gets that look, but unfortunately here, tons of pressure as Kamori Gamble gets beat up the middle, and there's really nowhere for Emory to go. Even if, even if he was able to get this throw off, this is completely covered. In fact, this is bad news. That's where he's throwing. He's trying to throw this ball to Whittemore. That's bad news there. Uh, they've covered they've covered the tight end here and gamble here, so that's dead too. This really was the route to hit, but that was never going to go there. That's not where that play is designed. Again, Dan Mullen is giving Emory Jones really one throw, and that throw is going to be Whittemore right here. Alabama comes with perfect pressure right into the throw window, making that fourth down unsuccessful. And Dan Mullen's face there shows you all you need to know as Florida was down 21-3. to First and 10 for Florida now. New drive still down 21-3 to after the defense gets a stop. Xavier Henderson is going to be wide open on a hitch route right here. Emery's never going to look there. He's going to start looking left. 
Uh, you got to imagine at this point, he's only really looking at this out route here from Rick Wells. Uh, because if he was looking here, you would have already saw that was promising. You can't see it on your screen, but it would have looked promising to a quarterback. He's looking at Rick Wells, and he's going to come across here to a vertical route he has up top that you can't see. He's got Pierce as a check down who he could dump the ball down to. Mainly, though, he has amazing pass protection. Take a look at this. Look at this pass protection. Again, if you go back and you watch Florida's film versus any team last year with Kyle Trask, this would have been a dream. This was not happening. So remarkable work from Florida's offensive line. He's standing back here. He's got all day. On his own, he's going to leave the pocket early. He escapes an early tackle there and is able to turn this into some yards. But really, no reason here not to complete this 15-yard hitch route. It's wide open. You can't see it. Not looking for it. Uh, instead, escapes the pocket and goes ahead and gains some yards. Of course, this is college football. Again, you know, I don't want to drive too hard into Emery. Um, his skill set is not going to be a pure passer. How Florida uses him is the right way to utilize him. But, you know, on film, when you're looking, you can see that there are opportunities for him to further increase his ability as a passer, uh, to put it as kindly as possible. Second quarter now, Emory Jones' numbers, of course, as you see here, not pretty in the early going of this game, but something he was doing really well was running the football and running the speed option. And you're going to see Alabama now make the adjustment. They've been burned by this twice already. And here is the adjustment. We're still going to have the edge defender protect the zone read from Emory, but we're going to make sure our linebacker does not get trapped. There it is. Gurash can't even get to him. As soon as he thinks... This is going to wind up being a speed option. He is out of there. He's going to beat Guraj to the spot, which is what he does. And then he's going to make this play on the boundary on Pierce. Nice tackle on third and three. A nice stop by Alabama showing recognition that if you want to run the speed option, we're going to stop it. And then this is where Dan Mullen is going to begin to use some of the adjustments Alabama had to make to stop that speed option against them. Another three and out from Florida's defense. Florida gets the ball back. It's now second down. And one thing Alabama was not going to be beat by was the running back wheel. But Florida used this play to its advantage. Obviously, it toasted Georgia last time around. Nick Saban had a feeling that maybe with Emory Jones, this would be a simple concept for him to execute. And Florida used it really well. I think they wanted to go to it maybe only a couple of times, but they primarily used it to create plays like this one. Here's Naquan. He's going to come out. But take a look here at Zipper. He's going to be underneath blocking for a long time before he releases. Now we get the linebacker coming out to make sure I am not going to get beat on this wheel route. I've seen this on CBS before, but nobody is going to cover. Here we go. Take a look. Zipper. And again, nice job by Emory Jones here. This is nice by him. He's looking right now at the wheel route, and then he's going to come down right at the last second and throw this ball to Zipper. There it is. Nobody is anywhere near him for a huge, huge gain from Florida. And let's take a look one more time how well this works. This is a long developing play. Here we are. He's going to engage this block for quite some time. Slip out. No one's paying attention. Corner blitz does not get there in time. Emery hangs in there. Gets this ball right on the money to zipper, which allows Florida to have a big gain. Sometimes when you run a play, people just are not open. That's the case here. Again, amazing pass protection from Florida. Delance gets hurt, and you have Tarquin come in. I thought Tarquin did really well and probably earned himself some more snaps in this game than what he got. You're going to see him one-on-one -on -one versus Bama's best pass rusher. There's Will Anderson. He's going to handle himself well accordingly. I mean, look at this pocket. This is amazing. I cannot celebrate this enough. Guraj has been absolutely fantastic at left tackle. Uh, at left guard, White has been revelation. And at center, Kingsley has been fantastic. Again, these three have been exemplary. But you have gotten good play out of the right side as well. And together, those five are becoming, I think, potentially the best line in the SEC right now, at least by performance. There's a whole season left to go. But shocking uh, results for all five of those. But again, really here, given what Florida's offensive line has been like, it was a big question mark coming into the year. Of course, we had high hopes that this combination here would work really well. We talked about it a lot last year. That winds up being true. But this was, again, really, you can't say enough good things about the performance. Now, at this point in time, Emory's going to sling this ball to a place that should not be slung. 
he's also going to finish again. Take a look at the finish here. We talk about this a lot. Look at his right foot consistently, basically not snapping forward at all. Go in your backyard, throw a football, and throw a football with your back foot staying there, and throw one where it comes forward, and you see how much more power you can generate. He's absolutely under no duress. He has no pressure, and he's also making the wrong choice, as you can see right here. Here is Naquan. He is open. He is your check down. If you don't like anything, you got to go to your check down, give him a chance, and in fact, he's going to have a nice gain there on first down. Instead, it's an incompletion. Second and 10 now, amazing pass protection is about to happen here again, and we're going to wind up missing this throw to shorter. Let's start first by looking at this pass protection. Again, there's Will Anderson. He's going to go on the ground and then eventually get pancaked there by Kingsley. Gone. Guraj got him. Tarquin passed off. Will Anderson now is here. That's a heck of a pocket. That's what you like to see. And then here's Shorter, who is, as you can see, wide open. Emery is uh, going to miss this ball far out to the wide side here. Again, very simple throw, clean pocket. No one in your face. This is the dream situation right here as a quarterback. You rarely get this, just not on the mark. This obviously is the bad side of Emery's quarterbacking. Again, as, as the game went on, he did certainly have some really nice plays. But this is just who I think Emery's going to be as a quarterback because the technical skills aren't there. There'll be highs, there'll be lows, there'll be lots of inconsistency. Uh, but Dan Mullen obviously proved in this game that he knows how to run plays to put Emery in successful situations. There will be questions asked of how long can you keep that going during a season? Are you able to keep surprising teams with new plays? Now, obviously, if Florida can just line up and run the football at you, as we're going to see in the second half, there's not a lot defenses can do to stop that. If you know Florida's going to run and they're still running on you, Again, that is a recipe for success. This is a great call by Dan Mullen. It's fourth and six. Emery's not been on the mark. You know that they've been allowing you to basically line up one-on-one -on -one and run go routes all day long with no safety help. Florida's going to line up Copeland inside the numbers, inside the numbers, which means Alabama's going to take inside leverage like we talk about. I'm sorry, outside leverage here, rather not inside, outside leverage to funnel to the safety, which is the right technique. And then Florida's going to just basically run outside of this on a go route to give Emery the maximum window for this throw on fourth down and six. And there it is. Again, the safety's all the way down in here playing run or any little dig or drag playing the running back coming out of the backfield not playing anything deep and Emery's going to throw this ball again still leaning back off his back foot it's not a good throw but this is where bad passes really help you this is not a purposeful back shoulder throw this is not supposed to be a comeback this is where a bad throw winds up getting a pass interference call and why does it because this is actually perfect coverage. If you look right here on this part of your screen the ball is now being underthrown again not on purpose He's on top of this route. This route is absolutely dead. But as Copeland is trying to come back to get to the football, which he's doing a nice job of, he is now going to be stuck. And this is very hard as a DB. He's stuck. You can see him right there. He's going to get pulled around. Copeland's moving him this way. He's still going this way. He's going to get caught up in the wash right here. And really, it's just enough, especially if you're zooming in on it, it's just enough where he's going to hold up Copeland's momentum right here. And that's going to be just enough for Florida to convert the first. A nice job by Copeland to come back to this underthrown ball. Again, in the NFL, you would purposely underthrow that ball. And you would probably purposely underthrow it to the back shoulder over here on the sideline. You wouldn't throw it inside that far. But it doesn't matter. The bad throw here actually works in Emery's favor as it draws the pass interference. If that's a good throw somewhere over the top on the vertical route, it's probably not going to be completed due to the great coverage. If it's a back shoulder throw, of course, it's got a shot. That's not happening. So the bad throw short pays dividends for Florida and converts a crucial fourth and six early in the first half. Nice play design again from Florida. You're going to see Whittemore is going to bring a motion across the formation, which is going to clear out two defenders away from what Florida wants to do, which is run the ball right here up the middle. And then the law firm of Kingsley, White, and Guraj are going to take over and annihilate Alabama. Take a look at the left side of this. That is beautiful. When was the last time as a Gators fan you have seen this kind of hole against this kind of opposition? 
That is a dream. It's a dream. Fantastic work. And again, great play design because take a look at what happened here. Just that simple Whittemore motion and the threat of Emery being able to run out this side with a block from Whittemore has overshifted the entire Bama defense. And that's going to allow this interior run right here. There goes Malik. Makes a move on the safety and finishes this. A great finish. It was great to see Florida's running backs getting a chance to shine. And you can allow your running backs to shine if you can get them to the second level. Second level, of course, is going to get them to the safety, get them to an unblocked linebacker, and that's successful there. And again, this is just fantastic. I mean, look look right here. Look at two of the partners of the law firm, right? There's Kingsley, there's White, just pancaking. I mean, just this, this is, this is, watch this all day long. Look at this one more time. Just get on the ground, get out of the play. Gone. Touchdown. Power football. Florida outpowering Alabama, the more physical team on the day for sure. And I loved it. Perhaps one of the plays of the game, or not perhaps, but definitely is this extra point. You would not have known it at the time, but if you tend to miss extra points, it tends to be a bad omen. And we can see what happens here by watching the hold. Let's take a close look at the hold. Make sure this is good. Here it is. Snap looks good. Hold is down. Ball is rotated and sitting perfectly. That is a good hold. And we're going to miss this kick. Why? Because of what you see right here. Body motions leaning this way. For those of you that played soccer, you'll be familiar with this. Uh, this plant foot should have been a little more upright, body presser, a little more upright, leaning away. And if you lean away, you tend to push the ball this way. And there it is. Take a look at the momentum. It pulls him across. There it goes. And look at the finish. He's way over here, body finishing this way. He knows it's not good. And a miss wide right. Hold was good. Snap was good. Laces were out. Unfortunately, a missed extra point that hurt bad. Emery now starting to pick up his game at second. Uh, sorry, it's 21-9 at second and six for Florida. Rick Wells is going to put a really nice move here. The linebacker, there it is. Just a little stutter move to the middle. Emery's going to find him and throw a nice catchable ball. That's going to allow Rick Wells to gain a bunch of extra yards. So a nice completion by Emery Jones there. On time throw. Easy throw over the middle. Again, take a look here. Florida actually is going to go. Five receivers here. Not something you see often with Emory. Five receivers running routes. And in reality, if you watch all these routes, you're going to get a hitch route here. You're going to get, again, these are all routes that could be thrown, right? But Emory knows where he's going the whole time. This is the matchup. Florida spreading them out, knowing they want this matchup. And Rick Wells is going to win. Ball's thrown on time. Easy completion, good first down. Nice use of five receivers there. Uh, from Florida. Again, showing we're not just going to run the ball with the zone re. We're not going to speed option. We're not going to wind up running a shovel pass. Or we're not going to wind up you know, doing this, that, or the other. We're going to be multiple. We're going to attack you from a variety of different looks, sometimes with five receivers, sometimes with two, uh, but really going to make you defend the entire field, even if, again, even if we're limited throwing the football. So just really mastery, great mastery here. So for all that mastery, you're watching the game, and right now you're thinking it's 21-9, doesn't feel that great. That's true. You still have to score enough points to win a football game. But as you've seen in this first half, despite how ugly it was, despite how things were pretty poor, uh, there were a lot of really positive things that displayed themselves in the second half. And that's, what's, that's why watching film is so useful. Was it a fluke? Uh, was the O-line dominating? What was causing this? Of course, you've already seen some of these answers. And then sometimes you actually have a really good play call on second and 19. But again, one player makes a really nice play. Florida's going to try to run a screen here. This is good coaching. We've talked about this before with edge defenders. If this edge defender gets sucked in some, this play is going to be huge. Instead, right away, he knows he has boundary responsibility here in the flats. And he cannot get sucked in, especially because he has no threat coming out to his side. So he is going to do what he should do and keep this distance here. This is Kamori Gamble. He's going to keep his distance, stay on the edge, and then Florida is going to try to run this screen. Again, this is just perfect playing. He knows he's assigned to Kamori Gamble. He stays on his outside of his body. Take a look at that. Here comes 
part of the law firm. We got White and Guraj coming. Here they come. And this is just a great play. That's a great play. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this play design is nice is if this block is able to happen, if he is further inside here where Florida wanted him to be, and they're able to get this block, then if you look here, right? If you look here, you have Kingsley taking out a man, then you can't see it, but there's a safety way off your screen. This is second and 19. If that block is made, that might be a 10, 15, 20 yard gain. So nice play call, good play design, just a better play individually right here. All right, first and 10. Florida now trying to get themselves back in the game. First play of the second half. Copeland's going to line up inside the numbers, which is going to give outside leverage from the corner, which is perfect by Alabama. And then a nice job by Florida recognizing the rules of this. Copeland's going to release to the outside and then actually stepped inside to create a throw window really in this area on a skinny post route. Emery's going to get great protection, as we've consistently seen on this film breakdown. Great protection. He's going to wind up throwing the ball late and off target. And because of that, that's actually going to wind up drawing a penalty. So this is the second example we've seen where a poorly thrown ball winds up being a benefit to Florida. Uh, there was a way for this ball to be completed to Copeland. Copeland won on this route. And as you're going to see here, Emery, back foot hits the ground. And then right now, he should be throwing the football. He waits about a full second too late, as he tends to often do. This ball is not going to get there, but because he makes a bad pass, it becomes a first down. You can see it when CBS zooms in right here perfectly, and here it is. Copeland now has turned this route. You're not going to see it, but he actually came from the outside in front. He creates a throw window. He's expecting the ball right here. The ball should already be flying to him at this point in time, and it is not. He's still coming down the field. Now the route's way wonky. Now he gets held. Again, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. He's also looking at the ball. This ball's coming way over their heads. And now Copeland adjusting to the ball in the air nicely. You have to give him credit for this. He ran a good route. He's adjusting to the ball in the air again nicely. Is going to have to turn right into his body. You're running at full speed. That's how this stuff happens. You think it's easy. You're not jogging around out there. You're running at full speed. He just hooks him for just a second. And that's enough to draw, of course, the penalty. And so Florida will take this all day, every day. It's two bad passes, two first downs by penalty. That's one way to move the chains. So although Emery struggles to consistently throw the football, he generally, 95% of the time, makes the right read on his own read and then does it really well with the timing of it. Here's an example where you're going to see Alabama gets two Sucked in right here. Too far in. Easy read for Emory. Let me keep this ball. Get to the outside. Again, Florida making great use of their tight ends here. Here's Gamble again. Great use of their tight ends, which is going to allow him to get to the second level to block the safety. There it is. And that's going to allow Emory to pick up a bunch of yards very very easily really really nice work by florida you can see they're clogging up the interior because florida was able to run to the inside and the outside bama's having to protect both here's your edge protector on this side here's your edge protector on that side there's no real great way for bama to win they're trying to rotate their safeties in here to make these tackles late which can work but florida is always accounting for them as you see here, really great play design. There's another great wide receiver block here. That's going to allow Emory to pick up a bunch of yards. Nice example here of Florida getting beat on the second and one. They're trying to pass here, trying to push the ball downfield some. And a nice, quick inside release that beats DeLance. And then Malik Davis really with a hero, hero play here. Here comes your blitz. And he's going to just get a chip right there. And that's something. That's not nothing. That's something that's going to allow Emery to escape. DeLance is going to get away with a hold for sure. Absolutely. That should be called. It doesn't get called. Thank you very much. And then he's going to complete this pass on the run. Emery throws very well on the run, which we've mentioned. In fact, I think he throws better on the run than he does uh, standing still. There it is. Nice throw, nice completion. Florida gets over the hold. We'll take it. A lot of bad officiating in this game for sure. Uh, going both ways. Probably a little bit more 
you know, painful for Florida, I would say, given some of the pass interference calls we'll look at on the defensive side. But regardless, Florida gets away with that one there. Nice conversion. Florida definitely runs the ball better to the left side than the right side, but they can run the ball to the right side, and we will give them some shine when shine is due. Here's Stuart Reese with a nice block. Here's DeLance just really holding his own here. Again, no, no drive. Doesn't need to drive. His job is just to hold this gap to create this edge here and this gap. Which you see, this play is almost blown up. Guraj just gets enough of a bump on him here that it throws him off. And that allows Malik to gain nine yards. Nice job by Copeland right here as well. Again, Florida's receivers have really bought into blocking this year. That's a huge testament to Dan Mullen. Last year, it was a, you know, a passing fiesta. This year, you're asking your receivers to block a lot. It's not nearly as sexy, but they're doing a great job uh, of executing that game plan. Florida's going to go back to the speed option. It had worked every time except for once, and it's not going to work this time either. Here again is Will Anderson. He's going to step in, eat up Emery. Emery's got to pitch this ball, and this is the key to the whole play. Is he's going to get outside of this block. This is the block you need from DeLance. Really not DeLance's fault here. He's just he's not going to he's going to get beat to the spot. And again, not DeLance's fault. This is just good recognition. This play is coming. He's going to beat him to the spot. Now he cannot be blocked. And now they're set up to make a stop, which they do for a very short game. But Dan Mullen is not afraid to run it again. Let's flip the side of the field. Let's motion Whittemore over. Let's bring one of their safeties down, which is what Bama again tends to do on a motion. And then let's see if they'll bite on the bait this time. And oh, look, we've got a taker. He wants to go fishing. And fishing he shall go. Take a look here. Very nice wrinkle. Rather than have Emery roll out here and start the speed option, he's actually going to stand still and allow. Here comes the edge defender coming in at Emery. Here comes the linebacker supposed to be taking out the edge and the running back here. Florida then, nice job. Bait him in. Guraj able to step outside and now actually get on this edge. There it is. Pitch out. And now look at the blocking. Here's Whittemore locked up. There's Copeland again locked up, right? And then there goes Malik Davis. Really, really great stuff. Again, Guraj all the way down the field. You love to see this. This is the key man on this play, and he is not going to touch him until he's all the way in the 12-yard line. That's what you're looking for out of your offensive line. That is fantastic. It's no secret that these film reviews love Pierce, and that's because the film loves Pierce because Pierce breaks a ton of tackles. In fact, Florida's running backs are all having really solid years and are all solid on film. Uh, but Pierce really, really breaks tackles. This is third and four. Uh, Florida down 21-9. Crucial situation. Bama is all over this play. Rather than run the speed option to this side like they have been doing, they try to bring him around here. Again, a different look of the speed option, and Bama is all over it. Why? Because we have to deal with Will Anderson again. This dude is a monster. He's going to blow this play up from the start. Reese can't handle him. He blows right past Reese. And now we're in trouble because Reese was supposed to not allow that to happen so that DeLance could then again block our key man here, and then we'd be in business. Instead, we're not in business. Emory does a nice job just to get this ball out, and now it's Pierce versus everyone. Puts a move on, gets by one, puts a move on by two, drives the legs, and really a great job to make this a fourth and very short by Pierce. That is a heroic effort on this play. Fourth and one, a lot of good stuff on this one play. You can see that the effect of Dan Mullen's running offense and having a running quarterback. Alabama has to play three on three out here. Again, Emory is capable, of course, of making especially a basic little screen pass here. And they are going to load the box up here and expect run. And Florida is still going to be able to run even numbers versus Alabama, even if this exchange is wonky. Again, here, Emory should just be handing this off immediately. I mean, he has. there's no business in him keeping this. The reason he's thinking about keeping it is because he's getting a jailbreak here. We talked about this on film that Bama likes to jailbreak this route. But this is what they do. When they jailbreak it, they have help behind it. Here's your help behind it. Anytime you're going to see a hard crash from Bama, it's really bait to get you to go the way they want you to go, which is right here. Emory does make the right decision, although it's a little wonky. Pierce does wind up with this ball, 
And then Pierce finishes this run all the way into the end zone. Again, Pierce really, really great at finishing these runs. And some good blocks here on the side. Guraj fighting hard. The law firm fighting hard. Creating this lane. And a nice run by Pierce. Great touchdown by Florida on fourth down and one. It's great. Just great, great, great to see Florida able to be the more physical, dominant line of scrimmage team in this game. It's first and 10 for Florida from the one yard line because Florida has dropped the kickoff and did not pick it up and let it roll to the one. So we will see if we will see Weston. That's right. We will see if we will see. That's great English there. Uh, Weston on special teams handling kickoff returns anymore if he stays in the doghouse for a while after that one. This so far is going to be the drive of the year for Florida. It might potentially remain that way unless Florida is able to actually win something and hang a banner because going 99 yards on Alabama at any given time is a great achievement, especially when it starts off with a play that doesn't work. So Florida thinks, you know what? We haven't quite got this wheel route to a running back yet, but we're still going to try because we are wheel route you. And Bama says, oh, no, 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 that's never happening. We're always making sure we're paying attention to your running back, and we are not going to let that happen, especially when it's Naquan Wright who tore up Georgia on this route, and Florida wants that. So it's a flow to the right, throw back to the left to Naquan, and they're like, no, we're good. Again, you can't really see this guy, but trust me, he's there, and he's good. That's not going to happen. I don't like that. And there comes Emery, who actually does find the second-best receiver, Second best receiver in this case is Zipper. Zipper is just running a simple little dig, uh, dig here. He does find him. Gets a little pressure in his face from the right side here. Reese gets beat on this. And he does find the right guy. Just doesn't quite get the ball there. It's second down from the one. Dan Mullen seemed to know what Nick Saban was going to be running on defense. It was kind of eerie. So right now you're going to catch Bama in something they really didn't do very often in this game, and that was bail. He's going to bail here to, to be a deep third defender. Watch him. And Florida's going to run a hitch, which is perfect. That's the exact play. There's no read here. He's just going to run this hitch. So Dan, again, high degree of confidence with this look. This is what you're going to get. And he gets it. Here it is. One more time. In case you're wondering, they're really covering the heck out of this wheel route. <laughs> so there's the wheel route again. Hitch on the backside. Emory Jones here. Plenty of time to make this throw. And yet again, he does not finish his throw. Take a look at his right foot. Just hanging around back there. And this ball bounces before it gets to Rick Wells. This is only a five-yard pass. Ten total air yards to get there from where Emory is standing. Ball gets bounced. So now it's second and 10. Now third and 10 on the one-yard line. Florida down 28-16. Feels like this could be the beginning of the end, perhaps. But instead of the beginning of the end, Alabama, a team we mentioned, had their weakness in their secondary. Although their front seven really struggled with Florida's offensive line, which was a fantastic result for Florida. Obviously a surprise in many ways. Uh, their secondary is mainly, to a certain degree, the more untested part of their unit. And this is something that I'm sure is going to drive Nick Saban crazy, but it winds up being a fortunate result for Florida. Florida going five wide, something we chronicled so often last year on film reviews. Of course, I love this formation with the good trigger man at quarterback. And it's going to work out here for Florida. They're going to run a very, very simple route combo. They're going to run off here. They're going to have Naquan over here. And all that's supposed to happen, and you're going to see this here, is he's going to bail deep and soak up whatever vertical route comes his way and then signal under, under, under to the inside defender, the slot defender, who's supposed to come and step up and take this route here in the flat. So you'll see him call this. Watch. Take a look right here. He's pointing under, under, under. He's watching the release of the number one receiver, number one receiver because he's on the outside. This is the number two receiver, and that tells this defender to come down immediately and take this route away, and then he is going to take this one away. Instead, what happens is we get a backpedal, backpedal, take a look here, backpedal, 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 backpedal. We're too late now. He should already be right here. He's too late. We've seen Florida do this on defense a bunch in their own right, and now because he's too late, and then because Emery throws a bad pass... <laughs> 
I mean, I'm only laughing because this has worked in his favor almost all game. And he's going to throw a bad pass that's going to float high. And he thinks, maybe I have an interception here. So he leaves his feet. No need for that. Again, it's third down and 10. Make the tackle. Stop Florida. Make them punt. But he's like, ah, oh, this is overthrown. I've got a pick six. Look at all this real estate I have here. I'm pick six. Whoa! First down and more for Florida. So a lot of things working in Florida's favor here. Blown coverage by Bama on the under, under, under. A high kind of-ish ball. Doesn't seem right coming out of his handle. It seems behind him a little bit. Uh, that all works perfectly. Just how Florida drew it up. But either way, Florida taking advantage. Look, college football oftentimes is simply about taking advantage of the other team's mistakes. And Emory on third down, despite first down and second down not going well, delivers a catchable ball that allows Florida after the conversion as first down and 10 for Florida, we saw a different version of this kind of play on an interception Emory threw to, to Whittemore in the USF game. It's going to happen here. This should be an easy conversion. Rick Wells is going to release into this area of the field and have just a ton of real estate. Unfortunately, Florida is not going to complete this pass despite the fact that Bama drops eight, despite the fact that he has all day back here to throw. He's just not going to make this happen. Let's watch the mechanics again. Snap, back foot hits the ground. He wants to go to this vertical route here. It's not there. He then comes across the field. He should not move off of his spot yet. Keep your eyes downfield. Eyes downfield, eyes downfield. Again, see how he's already escaping to run, the kind of drop of the hips, escape to run, no need. That throws his footwork and his timing off. Now he's late again. Does not finish this throw. Take a look at where his body is. Again, he's still leaning backwards. Right? Momentum is not his friend. He's working against himself. And obviously, we saw the USF player peel back and pick this off. It almost happens again here. He's almost there for that. And instead of that being an easy completion and a big gain for Florida... It winds up going into the ground and thankfully not a pick. Now you can see here on this camera, there is tons of space here. Rick Wells was open here. As soon as he was here, at Emory not in the pocket like you saw him kind of duck his shoulders, skip across. Instead of he had just simply moved his eyes across the field, take a, took one slide step and driven this ball here, he had Rick Wells in this area of the field for a humongous gain. Here's your safety. This player has no chance. And said he waits again a second too late, does not drive down his throw, floats this ball perilously close to the dropping corner, who almost makes an interception and takes a big, big gain away from Florida and instead makes it an incomplete pass, thankfully. Florida now really showing off their versatility in the run game. Ethan White is going to allow his man to slide past him to get to the second level. That's going to get picked up by Gamble, who had a great game blocking, really has come into his own as a blocker. There it is. Here's your block. Here's your block. Take a look at these seals, and here's your inside run that's perfectly timed. Why does this work well? Because Alabama is really worried about the outside run. Take a look one more time. They're really sick of getting gouged on the exterior. They're going to overplay it, and that is going to allow Florida to hit them right up the middle for a huge gain. Again, Dan Mullen, impeccable timing, good play design, rarely doing the same thing twice, just little derivations of previous plays that led to huge success. I can't say enough about the blocking, so I won't stop talking about it because it's so good. First down and 10, Naquan right. This play is not designed to go out here. It's designed to come in here, but this play gets blown up a little bit here. However, take a look. Again, unblocked man. This is always the unblocked man. Makes a nice read here. He's down low in the position. Here's what we talked about. Bama likes to do this. They're going to hard crash their end and then bring help here in the form of safety. So they're baiting Emery to keep this. There's the bait, right? He doesn't keep it. He hands it off to Naquan. And now, again, a law firm here just doing a great job, right? Here's Kingsley. Here's White. Here's Guraj. You just, you just can't, be, you can't beat those guys. I mean, look at this. Just dominating the left side. That creates a wall that Naquan is able to run around. And then at the top of your screen, 
You're going to get Shorter, who's always hustling hard, doing all the dirty work up top, along with Rick Wells, who's getting out of the way so he doesn't wind up kidding any kind of call. Then Naquan Wright makes a man miss and then takes off for the first down. Great execution. Again, Florida's blocking across the board. Just stellar in this game. Not perfect. Obviously, there's issues you're seeing on film, but overall, unbelievably impressive. Uh, one of the best offensive line games I've seen on film probably in a decade. Alabama now at this point in time starting to get a little worn down. They've been getting pushed around for much of this game. Florida still on the same drive from the one-yard line. Again, here comes Rick Wells. Here comes the safety motioning down. Bama going to keep edge defenders on both sides to worry about the zone read. And then here comes Ethan White. Again, we're going to highlight him because he is quick for a guy of his size. He's going to pull across the formation, give a little bit of help here as he drives by to ultimately engage the edge defender that's out here. Let's take him out of the play, and let's let Naquan do the rest for a Florida first down. First down and 10. Now, DeLance, they're highlighting this. They're really highlighting Kingsley because he's been dominating. But regardless, on this play, we're going to highlight DeLance. Is this DeLance's fault? Ultimately, his man beats him, but there's not a lot he can do here. He's he's already inside of him by alignment. See the helmets? And he's going to step into the inside here. It's his assignment. There's not a lot anybody can do about that one. That's That's... That's trouble. He's going to blow that play right up there. Again, certainly I'd be the first person to point out any lineman that struggles one-on-one. -on -one. This is just a good play by Bama, taking advantage of the space Florida's giving, the scheme they're using to block. Just a whiff here. An unfortunate one because, again, take a look at what's going on over here. A lot of promise. A lot of promise here. But a nice individual play to ruin that one. Florida going to give another speed option look here. This time out of a tight bunch formation on the left side. There comes Rick Wells. He'll reset in the slot on the right side. That, of course, brings the safety down here. Here's your edge defender. Here's going to be your speed option stopper, if you will. Except Florida's going to get what they want. He's going to be inside. Let's watch the action here. He's going to be inside. And now Emery has really allowed this with his Tommy Frazier-like attack line. Again, really, if you're an option quarterback, you want to run straight at your edge defender. The straighter, the better, because that's going to engage the linebacker as well, which allows you to then make a pitch out here. This ball should have been pitched by Emery. He really should be engaging right now, knowing he's got a good line of attack and he has a chance to complete this pitch out here. He's not going to pitch. He's going to keep it. He's going to get five yards here, but a much, much bigger play certainly because he has no chance of getting out here now. So if this pitch comes out here, we've got a bigger play available. Uh, either way, Emery has a good feel for running the option. He runs it quickly and decisively. It's a nice positive gain there. It's impressive for a guy who obviously isn't running a triple option or an option all that frequently, but it was heavily featured in this game. And again, that speed option, even though we gained five yards there, was very much in the back of Alabama's defensive coordinator's minds on each and every play to the point to where, as they said, it caused them to largely abandon a lot of the concepts they wanted to run to stop Florida's typical zone read running game as well as a third and nine. And this is going to be an actual completed pass down the field to a receiver. Is this supposed to be a back shoulder throw? I'm going to say probably not. But again, you could always adjust these on the fly. Like typically, if you're going to wind up running a go route and the receiver feels like, you know, he's got top control he's, or he's being top controlled in the situation, he's going to look back for the ball. The quarterback can throw this wherever he wants. He can throw this obviously vertically. He can throw this back shoulder. Emery throws so many of these balls from the right hash or middle part of the field when he's throwing across this way behind and out of bounds, as we saw earlier. I happen to think this just works out, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Let's assume that he did it on purpose. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, this ball gets completed on third down and nine, a huge conversion. Emory stays hot in high leverage situations. Alabama in this situation, again, still not playing their traditional defense, although they're going to play man. They're really worried about the run. 
They're playing much softer in a lot of regards. They're not up here jamming at the front of the line. They're trying to make sure they have as many defenders as possible with eyeballs into the backfield. And that allows a very simple one-on-one play where Emery knows the safety is not going to harass that. He's not going to get there. Emery does look at the safety. Take a look. Looks at the safety. Again, a little bit longer would be better, Emery. You know, not so quick, not so shifty. Just take just a little bit longer than this and then come to your guy. You can see how he's still always waiting. Perfect timing is look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Back foot, it's the ground. Now throw. Uh, Regardless, great catch by Xavier Henderson. Good body control. Great first down by Florida. And here we are again with what I'm referring to as the Miami play. Of course, it's not the Miami play. Plenty of teams run something like this, but this is a running formation to be sure. You're spreading the field out five wide, but you're forcing Alabama to have to cover all these guys. It's frustrating for defensive coordinators because they know you want to run the ball, but if you do take one of these guys and you put him in here, is Florida or any team capable of running a four on three on the outside? Yeah, they should be. You can just run a little bubble screen here and block, 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 and you're in. So you have to honor this. So here they are honoring this, honoring it here. And now, what are we going on here? Two, four, five, right? Two, four, six. So we're six on six. Six on six. Hat on hat football. This is something Florida has not typically won. In many years, we're going to run by the law firm because the law firm knows what's up, and we're going to score a touchdown. And take a look at this. This is just hat-on-hat football. Guraj takes care of his man. Here's your double. Look at this excellent double by Kingsley and White, creating the hole. Emery keeps the feet going and scores a touchdown. That is just big-time football from Florida. Excellent execution. Basic, simple play. And that is one of the best advantages of having a great offensive line is it allows you to run simple plays and gain predictable yardage because you're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Florida now within striking distance for the first time since the opening kickoff. Really, it's 31-23. Whittemore again going to come across the motion, come across in motion, going to bring the safety down. And then Florida's going to run a very simple play. Take a look here. Bama has to honor every little zone read handoff, which is going to leave a sneaky, deaky chip and release there from Zipper. Will Anderson falls down. Bama is ready for this, by the way. Zipper is just going to slide into this little window. Emery's going to make a nice throw here and a nice turn outside for the first down by Zipper. One more time. There comes Emery. Again, he does not set the feet. I think he throws better on the run, so fine. Typically in this kind of play, you want to fake this handoff. You want to roll. You want to set your feet right here. Stop, set your feet, drive down, make a throw. But in this case with Emery, we're not going to wind up reinventing the wheel as a redshirt junior. We're just going to take what he does and live with it. And that is a nice completion, a nice play design. Another example of what we saw in the very first drive of the game, the tight ends uh, sneaking out after blocking a little chip and release. Now, I say this on each and every film film review that I do. I can't say for sure what all these plays are. I can look at on film and I can watch routes. I can see what's happening. Uh, I don't know what the actual play call is. This one's tricky because Emery treats it like it's a designed quarterback run, but nobody's blocking like that's the case. You can see here's your check down. There's no immediate block for this scenario. Emery has great protection here again. And he's not looking to throw. So I don't know what's happening here. The result of this play is Emory's going to run for a first down. The other result of this play is that Shorter on the bottom of your screen is going to run right past. Take a look. He's looking in the backfield. He's going to run right past this corner. And there is nobody over here. I mean, nobody. He is gone. But Emery's really not looking, I think, to throw the ball anywhere here. I think he sees that these linebackers are backed up, and he feels like it's a good time to run, and he does what he's comfortable with. Again, that's fine. I'm not going to be able to remake Emery, and neither is Dan Mullen at this point in time. He spent three years in the program already, uh, really four, actually. And so he's, you know, he's to the point to where he knows what's going on. This is what he's comfortable with. Let's get some first downs. Let's do what he does best. But... 
Of course, on that particular play, you did have a receiver wide open. So it's just a different look, a different style, I think, with Emery. If he's going to be the guy that Dan chooses the whole season as we're going to watch him on film, we're going to have to just get used to the fact that this is more of what it's going to look like. Uh, I can't imagine from all that I've seen, he's going to one day just wake up and start slinging the football all over the yard, making reads. He's comfortable running the football. He's comfortable making easy first read throws. And as long as Dan can scheme those things up, then obviously Florida has a chance to stay in football games with the dominance of their offensive line. Again, as to whether or not Florida's better off playing a guy like Anthony Richardson, of course, we discuss that on the podcast all the time. And spoiler alert, I think definitely so. I think you want to play the ceiling guy. That's my own personal philosophy. Of course, I'm not coaching. I'm just here doing these film breakdowns. Um, But I think you play the ceiling guy and let your team see how high they can go with that rather than a guy who you can win with, of course, Uh, But it's just so limited, it seems, in the actual passing game beyond first read, you know, gadgety plays like great creativity. But again, I'm not coaching Dan Mullen is, so I'll just keep breaking down the film. Florida down 31-23. Emery's going to try to keep this ball. It's already tucked away. He wants it back. He wants it back because he sees Alabama crash hard down here on the running back, and he wants it back. But he's not going to get it back because Will Anderson's there and it's going to be a fumble. And thankfully, Florida's going to fall on it. That could have been a disaster in the middle of the fourth quarter. Uh, Obviously, there's a fine line between holding on to the ball just enough time to make this read and then trying to get it back too late. Once it gets to be this late, you just got to live with that decision. And Florida gets away with that one. Third and 19, this is going to be a really important completion by Emery here. And Florida's going to get a look from Bama that they wouldn't often give other teams. Bama will drop eight. Bama will play zone. But in this situation, Bama, again, wants as many defenders with eyes on Emory as possible, which would not be not be how they would typically play this with just a throwing quarterback. And because of that, Florida's actually going to go against a very vanilla cover two static defense now part of this is because they feel like hey we don't have to worry about emery we don't have to disguise our defenses as much but you've got dan mullen calling plays and dan mullen's basically calling a play that says hey emery take the snap and look at whittemore just running the zone beater cover two beater the weak spot in the cover two is going to be right here in between these safeties in the middle of the field They're not even going to take a Tampa 2 look where you would have a dropper get into that area. They're just going to play an old school static cover 2. All you have to do to beat that is run this route right here. Again, Dan Mullen goes 5 wide. He has a great feel for this part of the game. Florida's going to get just enough protection here. And it's a nice job by Emery with by design an unblocked edge here. There goes Will. He's going to slide to the more dangerous, more dangerous, more direct rusher there. Good job by Guraj. Emery's going to set up. Again, they're expecting this. Notice how he drops back to this part of the field. This is the play the entire time. Set the feet. Hit this throw. Of course, if this is a better throw, it's a first down. It's possibly even a touchdown. But again, in this situation with Emery, I think you're taking completions where you get them. He's under a little bit of duress here. Gets this ball off. Good first read. Great play call by Dan Mullen. Can't say enough about the fact that he's consistently scheming up first read throws in these situations. Pretty remarkable stuff. Now, almost immediately after that completion, Florida's going to run tempo on this fourth and two, which is another master stroke by Dan Mullen. Bama clearly expecting run. Take a look at this. They have everyone in here on this fourth and two. Pass it if you want. Run any vertical route you want if you want. We are not going to let you run the ball. And Florida says, we'll keep it simple. We'll pass it, but really with an extended handoff. Let's just get a quick little flat out from Whittemore. And the reason this works is Bama. Take a look at the spacing here. They're not quite sure. Who am I looking at? Who am I covering? There's a little hesitation here because of the tempo. He's just a little slow to get there. And look at that, that extra, extra tempo there that Florida had probably gave them the indecisive quarter second, half second they needed to convert that fourth down. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ethan White. Block one, block two, 
Let me just shove that linebacker back three yards. Let me get him again. Just let him know what's up. Take a look here one more time. All right, here we go. Ready? A little bit of help there with his buddy Kingsley and the firm. Okay, I'm good. Kingsley, you got this. Let me just chuck this linebacker back three yards. Let me just chuck him back again because he's not worthy. And I'll let my boy Malik pick up seven yards, eight yards, maybe nine. Fantastic work. Dan Mullen, just really this film is a master class of offensive coordinating. It's such simple stuff, but it's so effective and so timely. He's doing everything at the right time. And now we're going to get a little running back speed motion here, something Florida hadn't done at all. And check out what this does. This confuses Alabama. We have a double commit to the running back. And because we have a double commit, we actually pull the dropping defender out of the way here, which allows Whittemore to come right into the zone. And again, this is just incredibly great. Of course, the safety's here. He's assigned to Whittemore, but it's second and 13. Dan's is trying to take a few simple yards here. And he gets it. Again, this is the first read. Although Emery's looking here, he's definitely not going there. He's just trying to make sure he moves these linebackers enough out of his way. And he's always going to Whittemore, who happens to be wide open. This is so fantastic. We talk a lot about the defensive side of the ball with Florida and in college football in general on the podcast about how the best defenses take away the first look. Many college quarterbacks, if you take away their first look, they really aren't comfortable doing anything else. That's one of the reasons why we praise Trask so often, so early, so consistently, is he was frequently able to get three, four, even five reads deep. But if Dan Mullen keeps allowing the first read to get open with these brilliant play calls, even against the defense like Alabama's, which is as well coordinated as anyone in the country's, of course, is, it's a good sign for Florida. It is just one game, but really, I mean, again, great stuff here from Dan. Third and six now. Hey, you know what? If it worked once, maybe it'll work twice. Let's do it again. And this time, Alabama's going to comply with a nickel blitz, which they love to do. And if they nickel blitz, the safety's going to have to cover this, and we're just going to run the same route. And there it is. Two for two. Good job, Emery. Nice and easy. Offensive line holds up. Gives him a window. Easy throw. Zipper makes the catch. Florida's tight ends were all over the stat sheet on Saturday for good reason. Great thing about being a Florida receiver or a tight end is on one play, you're making a third down catch to move the sticks. On the next play, you're going to make a nice block. Here's Zipper. Let's take him out of the equation. Now let's look here. We're going to pull Braun across. Braun's a lineman I like a lot. I really think he should play over Stuart Reese from what I've seen on film, but Reese continues to play over him. At any rate, nice block here. There's our boy, Ethan White. Let's, let's give him some more love. Look at him just shoot out of here. Whoop. Take a look here at the linebacker. He's gone. Middle linebacker no longer there. And now we've got a lot of great blocking going on. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. And then there goes Pierce. Safety's not going to get him. Takes a bad angle. And oh, look at this. Here is Shorter blocking his man into the end zone. Now look, I will keep saying this about Shorter. Five-star receiver, played for Penn State, came to Florida. Um, hard to know how good he could or couldn't be because we don't have a, a quarterback that's going to utilize his sort of possession receiver skill set. But this guy gives his all on every single play. We started showing it last year on film. We're showing it this year. And this is a touchdown because he's willing to block this guy into the end zone. He's just continually blocking him. He has no idea if this play is actually going to make it all the way to him. But he's doing his job blocking all the way until the end. And that allows Pierce to walk in for a touchdown. It takes all 11 guys to run the football well. And Florida has been committed to doing so. Here is the most important play of the game. Thanks to the missed extra point, Florida now has to go for two. Down 31-29. And Dan Mullen said, of course, that one person didn't know the play and the other one ran the wrong play. Who this is, we don't really know. If we had to guess from film, there's two people that perhaps seem to be confused, but I'm not going to speculate and, and know for sure. You know, you just you just can't know, but this play doesn't look great. Now, we saw Emery do a similar handoff like this with Pierce on the zone read, obviously. This one's even later than this. At some point in time, you just got to let it go. Uh, Bama's ready for the zone read here. In fact, they're totally expecting this. I'm surprised Florida didn't spread this out more, but... I'm not surprised because this play was supposed to be different. And again, 
I don't know what went wrong here. It's impossible for me to know whether you should have a guy like Whittemore coming across the set of block. Uh, should you have Zipper coming across the set of block? It's very possible that the action is supposed to be Zipper goes here, Whittemore goes here. Uh, if you watch either, if you watch either Zipper or Whittemore blocking, there's really not. I mean, of course, you're going to get some blocks here, but there's you know. I mean, we just can't know. We don't know. But we know is something went wrong on the most important play of the game. Dan had called an amazingly great game in the execution on this one. Unfortunately, at the biggest point in time, was left wanting. And that's disappointing, and I don't have more information on it because, again, I don't know the play, and it's really hard to figure out from what's going on here. What went wrong, I have to believe a zone read was part of it. I think the blocking scheme in some way, shape, or form got messed up. Either way, we'll never know. Doesn't seem like Dan's going to tell us, but unfortunately for Florida, they do not convert this two-point conversion despite the fact that they were almost always gaining two or more yards with every running play they had. So quite disappointing not to get this one to be so close to tying Bama at home with the crowd and the environment the way that it was after a master class play calling um, display, just un unfortunate way to end this football game there is one more play of course we'll look at it but this really was where the game ended and that is again a most unfitting and unfortunate ending given the second half rally florida had outscoring alabama 26 to 10 over the final three quarters all right last play of the game i love this when i was in the stands i love what alabama did of course i hated it for florida the odds of scoring are still infinitesimally small but this is, a, this is how you play defense in prevent. So off the screen, you're going to have three defenders deep that you cannot see. And then they know that Florida can't throw a Hail Mary from their own 25-yard line. So they're going to play man coverage over here on the most likely player to catch a pitch because he is on the space side of the field. And they're going to stay tight to the line of scrimmage here to stop again any short shenanigans. And they're going to bring four and not three. I am always in the camp of bringing four on Hail Mary plays or anything else so that you can not allow the quarterback to run around out here, sit here forever. I like exactly everything Bama does here. Now, Emery gets blamed on this play for not throwing the ball, but the reality is it's much like many other of the routes they called for him. It's a one, it's a one route play. Ball's going right here. That's where it's going. He's looking at it. There's no chance he's going to get it there because he's completely covered. Now, at this point in time, you know, should he dump the ball to Naquan? Yeah, he should. Should he throw the ball here? Uh, yeah, he should. Whittemore's wide open. But, you know, again, the success that Henry Jones had was largely because Dan Mullen was calling him plays that were executable to the first guy he saw. And that's great for Emory. He did a good job of that. You know, as a college football player, you do what the coach asks you to do. The coach says, hey, I put confidence in you to run these plays. You can do them. And Emory did them. And he certainly tried his best and did his best. But on this play, this was going to require a little bit more ad-libbing, a little bit more off-the-cuff, free-flowing play. Again, Florida's not going to score on this play in almost all likelihood. I'm not going to get too carried away with it. But it is a nice illustration of sort of what happens once the original play is just not there anymore he does have other options. Again, right now, he has options. Ball can come here. Ball can come here. Those are viable options. He's just running. Not sure what's going to happen now. Game ends. Again, end of the game. The game really ended on the two-point conversion, of course. It also ended when the defense couldn't stop them on those first three running plays. This is just ceremony, but it's a nice play by Alabama, uh, scheme-wise, to not even allow Florida to hit the initial play they wanted which is a fitting ending for the segment. I think Florida had a lot of success in this game because Dan Mullen did a phenomenal job drawing up, again, those first read plays. The first look for Emory was often there, and that is amazing work by him, given that Alabama knew Florida wasn't really comfortable throwing the ball down the field, making complicated throws, or even using complicated route combinations, and yet Dan Mullen was still able to, to score 29 points on them. Again, really remarkable stuff. That's going to do it for the offensive film breakdown against Alabama. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Check out the podcast each and every Monday. And I am James from the Gator Nation football podcast, and I will see you next time.